only hesitate at bringing it to you, Mr. Zyder, because it's not one of a kind. I told you I'm not interested in replicas, however cleverly they're done. Good Lord, it's not a replica, Mr. Zyder. What I meant was that there's a companion piece to this one, which is owned by the royal family. Of what country? Why, of England, of course. Of course. Lily! Maureen? <laughs> what else have you to show me today, Mrs. Brent? This one's rather special. There's mm. only one of these in the entire world, Mr. Zyder. Interestingly enough, it was commissioned by the Empress Dowager in 1864, and then later presented to the King of Portugal in 1866. Would you excuse me, please? Min Lo Chan has just left for New York. New York? Are you positive? I'm positive. My man just saw him get on the plane. How could they let him leave the mainland with those charges against him? Supposedly, there's a witness in New York that can prove that Min is innocent. If he's found innocent by that people's court, then he'll award the contract for the construction of the steel mill in Shantung to the Canadians. However, if he's found guilty, or if he never leaves New York, then uh, his assistant will take over and my company is certain to get that contract. It's a one billion dollar contract, Mr. Evans. As much as I'm opposed to violence, Min Lo Chan must die in New York. Jonah. Well, we're the same age, but who would ever guess that? Nobody, that's who. You look very distinguished, my friend. Oh, distinguished, yes. But I can't get over how much younger you look. We went to college together. Did he ever tell you that? Yes. I got better grades than he did. Dated prettier girls than he did. Ah, uh -huh. that's not quite true. For some of the time. I was even voted by my clubs the man most likely to succeed. And you have, impressively. Oh, well, I... Yeah, I've got a few newspapers and such. But you, you're not only younger looking than I am, but you're the Minister of Industrial Development for China. And I'm still just a newspaper man. You are too modest, Jonah. Well, how was lunch? Very nice. Is the afternoon paper out yet? It's on your desk. Good. Would you mind showing Emily around the plant while Min and I have a little chat? Oh, I'd be glad to. I'll just get someone to cover the phones, and then I will give you the VIP tour. You're very kind. Your article is most flattering. It's my pleasure. Sit down, sit down. Man. Well, there are a million things that I'd like to ask you about China, but uh, I hardly know where to begin. I'll tell you anything you want to know. But first, may I impose on our friendship? Anything you want, just ask for it. It's a large favor, and it's for me personally. Minutes, I've gotten older. I've gotten to be quite a grump. And if there's anything I lose patience with, it's beating around the bush. Back in 1946, before I came to this country, I was an agent for the Chinese army. You were a spy? One day, when we were in the region north of Peking, this man came to me with the news that the U.S. Marine Station in Qingtao would like to meet with me. He was a school teacher with a good reputation. So I met with the Marines, three of them. They wanted to know the size of the army that was marching on Peking, the number of tanks and armored vehicles for which they would pay me $10,000. An offer that I presume you refused. Of course I refused, and that was the end of it until a few months ago. Jonah, can you help me find those three Marines? Well, 1946, that was 
That was a long time ago, but... Uh... Oh, I guess if I contact some of my friends at the State Department... No. Your government must not know about this. But, men, if I check the state... I can't take the risk, Jonah. There are people in your government who would like to see me convicted of the charges that will be brought against me. Charges? I will be charged with having sold secret information of the Chinese army to the U.S. Marines. And I will also be charged with having robbed and killed the Chinese school teacher that brought us together. If you are thinking that you don't want to be involved, I understand. Min, you were always very good at calculus in college and chemistry and physics. But as I recall, you were never very good at reading minds. I know you. I know you're not a thief. I know you're not a murderer. Of course, I'll help you if I can. Thank you, Jonah. Now, how about finding these three ex-Marines help you? They know that I'm innocent. They're the only ones who could give testimony to the Board of Inquiry in China. I see. So all I've got to do is to locate three ex-Marines without involving the State Department. But I think I've got it. Peter Parker did a feature story about a Marine officer a few weeks ago. Maybe he's got an in. Get me Peter Parker. Major Collings? Peter, how are you? Just great. Listen, I need your help uh, unofficially. Okay. Now, this could save a man's career, maybe even his life. I need to know the names and whereabouts of those three Marines. That's the only clue in this picture? No, I know that they were all in North China together. They were in uh, Tsingtao, China, in September of 1946. Their mission was to buy secret military information about Mao's army. Well, that's better. How soon you need it? Yesterday. Yeah. How about tomorrow? Oh, that would be beautiful. Oh, it's also very important that this inquiry not be traced back to my newspaper or anyone on it. Oh, Peter. Major, please, trust me. Okay. You were straight when you wrote that article about me. So you'll call me tomorrow with their names and last known whereabouts? Right. At Tsingtao, China, September 1946. I'll do my best. Very much so. I appreciate it. Who else is in the house with them? Housekeeper and a cook. Oh, I'm still suffering from jet lag. What you need is a steam bath. Dry thing. Works for me every time. What I need is some sleep. You guys figure out some genius plan to knock off the old guy, will you? I'm gonna take a nap. First name on our list is Jonathan Fleming. I appreciate your help very much, Mr. Parker. Well, I didn't do much. My friend at the Marine Corps got these names for me. Now, Mr. Min, I want you to understand that we may have nothing at all on these men here, but if we don't, we'll just look elsewhere. It seems strange being here in this morgue, as you call it, trying to find three men who, for all I know, may be dead. 
Faber, Fillmore, Fine. Excuse me for a minute, please. inside the building. Well, there's nothing more we can do here. We've got the gun, we've got the man. The only thing we're missing is a motive. Are you, uh, you absolutely certain there's nothing you can tell me, Mr. Min? He just got here three days ago, Lieutenant. He's on a goodwill trip. I've been in this country for more than 30 years. Okay. There will be a complete set of pictures and a story about the mysterious gunman on the front page in the next edition. Well, if Spider-Man shows up, Tell him I need him as a material witness. Otherwise, I can only book the guy for possession of a deadly weapon, and I can hardly hold him very long on a charge like that. I'll be in touch. Thank you, Lieutenant. Kill the story. I beg your pardon? You heard me. I said kill the story about the gunman stalking through the morgue while Min was here. And I don't want anybody talking about it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. And that goes for you, too, Parker. This never happened. Well, I understand, but let's be honest, there were only two people down here in this morgue, and the gunman obviously wasn't coming after me. Mr. Min, it seems to me like you need round-the-clock police protection. You're absolutely right, Peter, but I can't afford to attract that kind of attention. My superiors will hear about it. Your government will hear about it. No, I guess I just have to be more careful. I don't think you understand. Just drop it, Parker. Perhaps I should stay at home more. 
Peter, when you collect the information about the three men, will you please come over to my niece's house? Yes, of course. Thank you. I'm a little tired, Jonah. Would you mind getting me a cab? Certainly. I call to Hong Kong? No, I don't want you to call me back. Try it now. I'll hold on. Mr. Zyder. Chung? Put the boss on, will you? Evans calling you, sir. Yes, Mr. Evans. We almost got him, but... Spare me the details, Mr. Evans. When are you going to try again? Tomorrow. And call me tomorrow. It was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, Mr. Zyder. You see, he's gotten involved with one of the newspapers. And I think they're going to get him police protection. I don't want to hear the sordid details. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Just do it. Let me know when it's done. That's all he says. Just do it. Who does he think I am? His highly paid trained bear. Oh, very funny. Hey, listen, we're gonna need another guy. Woosley's gonna be in a slammer for a while, so we're gonna need someone. Okay, but this time, get me somebody who's smart, will you? You got it. Where shall I begin? I was born of average parents in a small hamlet nestled in the Pocono Mountains. Peter. It was all woods, green, forests, and streams. It was wild corn. It was Indian country, you see. And there were signs all over the place of this. Um, the robbery or the shooting or whatever it was that happened in the Bugle press room yesterday. I heard all about it from Lieutenant Olson. Yeah, well, we killed that story. I know. Why? To save a man's life, Julie. What man? Just skip it, okay? Yeah, well, level with me, and I might. Look, I just don't think it would be safe for you to know about this. You're sounding ridiculously melodramatic, and I'm sick of you protecting me, Peter. Well, some ladies like to be protected. Oh. Well, tell me the truth, and let me decide if I want to be protected or not. We've been through a lot together. Yeah, I know. Have I ever let you down? I mean, have I ever breached a confidence? If you've told me to lay off the story, and I've agreed to, have I ever gone back on my word? Okay. The man who was captured is probably an assassin. I don't know, Uncle. Perhaps you're putting too much trust in Mr. Jameson and his people. One can only trust whom one trusts. Now, Uncle, you're getting very Chinese on me. Very well, my American niece. Whom do you trust? My family. You, of course. And... 
And no one else. When you get older, when you fall in love, when you have to depend on other people besides your family, then you'll be more trusting. Perhaps. Hold it. We'll give them a minute to get comfortable. Mr. Mian. Emily. Thank you for coming, Peter. Yes, well, I got information on each of the three men. Now, it's not very up to date, but at least it's a start. Very good. Emily, Peter will surely have some tea. Oh, yes, thank you. Uncle, were you expecting someone? Will you please pour the young man a cup of tea? Kiss your uncle goodbye. All right. Get everybody out of here but the old man. jumped out the window. Well, we got what we came for. Get the ladies out of here. I'm not leaving my uncle. Better do as they say. No! I'm not going to cooperate with these killers. Who said anything about killing? All we want to do is ask him a few questions. You tried to kill him yesterday, and if it weren't for... Lloyd! I'd like you to take this guy. His name is Martin Fulmer, and I'll take Jonathan Fleming. Hmm. If I find Fulmer, you want me to interview him? No. Just stick to the telephone. You see, 
the people who tried to kill Min also have these men's files. Just try to find them, and once you do, let me know as soon as possible. How long do we have? I don't know. It'll be a race to see who finds them first. Now, I told Rita that we should all get together tomorrow afternoon and see what we've come up with. So why don't you meet me here outside my building, okay? Okay. That's it. How is Mr. Mann? I don't know. Did you check with the hospital? No. Look, thanks a lot for helping out with this. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Well, what about their fingerprints as a way to find these guys? I already got the fingerprints from the Marine Corps. I gave them to Lieutenant Olson. And he should have something for me in the morning. Peter, it's not your fault that Mr. Min had a heart attack. Yeah. Hey, it sounds to me like his heart attack was caused by the strain of those guys busting into the house, waving guns around. Emily blames me for running away. To get the police. Peter. Good night. Emily, it's only because I have to prevent anyone from knowing that I'm Spider-Man, that I ran away. You're a coward. You left us to be killed. Only I could tell you. I never want to see you again. I didn't know you had a bad heart, Mr. Min. If I had known, I, I wouldn't have run away. I swear I wouldn't have run away. room, please. 944. Thank you. How is he, Emily? The doctor says it's too early to tell. I mean, is he conscious? Oh, yes, he's conscious. And sweet as always. Turn this into some kind of cheap farce with your fumbling. Mr. Zyder, I told you he had a heart attack. A bad heart attack. How do you know that? One of my men had a few drinks with one of the nurses who was taking care of him. He's in a bad way. I want him dead. I, I know. We're working on a plan. He'll never leave the hospital alive. If you ever expect to set foot in Asia again, you will not fail. Believe it, Mr. Zyder. I won't fail. What about the photographs of those Marines? Well, Min obviously is trying to locate the Marines in the pictures. They're probably involved in the charges of corruption against him. You better find them before he does and then persuade them not to cooperate. It'll be expensive. I want that contract to build a steel mill in Shantung. I don't care about the expenses. Don't you understand that by now? Okay. And what about the newspaper photographer? He's obviously trying to help men find those men. Get rid of them. I'll take care of everything. Goodbye. You get in that hospital ward and figure out the best time to hit the old man. Bertino, you and I have got to go and arrange to buy some confidential computer records. Then I want you to wipe out that photographer. His name is Peter Parker.
Peter Parker. I'm a graduate student in physics, but I took one of your courses in Far East history. Yes. Well, if you have a couple of minutes, I'd like to talk to you. Well, I have a dental appointment. I have to be brief, I'm afraid. <clears throat> well, thank you. You know, I remember so much about your course. It really made an impression on me. I'm not exactly sure why, but it did. Really? <laughs> yes. I've been working for a newspaper for the last year or so. I've encountered some really fascinating people and interesting stories. It's amazing, you know. Some of them are funny. Some of them are not so funny. Yes. I still have another minute, Mr. Parker. Was there anything else you wanted to say? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Um, problem is, I just don't know how to say it. Well, perhaps some other time. It's about Minlo Chan. The Chinese gentleman you were with in North China in 1946, and you were in the Marines, and your name was Jonathan Fleming, which Here, is your real Mr. name now. Parker. I'm not trying to invade your privacy. You sir. already have. This is very important. Please let me explain. I'm just going to pretend we never had this conversation. You understand? What'll it take to get me loose, Spider-Man? Oh, you're not going anywhere, pal. I can't afford another felony. Is that a fact? I meant it. They get me on another rap with a gun and I'm gone forever. You work for the guy who tried to kill the Chinese minister, right? When are they going to try to kill him again? Ask me something else, anything else. They're going to get him in the hospital tomorrow night. Okay, now I need to know names and where I can find Don't them. Don't ask me that. They'll get me in whatever jail they put me in and they'll kill me. You're right. What are they going to do about the three ex-Marines? Two guys are going to pick up some microfilm in the Brooklyn Subway Museum tomorrow at 4.30. The microfilm will tell my boss where to find the Marines. Okay. I'll tell the police you were very cooperative. Emily, I think we ought to... I don't to care what you think. Even though my uncle agreed to it, I will not permit it. Well, the doctor said that it was okay to move him. It's too dangerous. He's had a bad attack. I don't want him to die. Look, I am telling Excuse you, me. I... Excuse me, folks. They are planning to try to kill him here tomorrow night. How do you know that? From Spider-Man. Spider-Man told you? Yes, we're friends. It's true, they are. The viewers got lots of stories and photographs just because of Peter's relationship with Spider-Man. Well, I don't see what you and he have in common, but I don't doubt the two of you. And then it's settled. The Bugle can print the story of Min's death on the front page of tomorrow's afternoon edition. 
And so will the register. Believe me, it's the best way to keep him alive. Then early tomorrow, the doctor will move him into surgery. And from surgery, we'll have him transferred into a private hospital. Is that okay? All right. If you two are willing to do that, I see no reason why I should oppose it. Good. Then let's go ahead and tell your uncle that we're all in agreement. I appreciate you two announcing my death. I do think it will keep me alive. I'm sure of it, sir. Peter, Emily, I want you both to make me a promise. Whatever you want. What, Uncle? No matter what happens, I want you two to trust each other. I don't think... And I want your promise that you two will work together to find the men who can clear me. I thought... I don't want to have any relationship with you. Don't you hear me? Peter. Emily agrees. How about you? Of course. Very well. I will gratefully provide whatever money necessary for you two to take the Marines to China so that they can testify in my behalf. Then it's settled. You rest well, my friend. Uh, Jonah. Thank you.
we'll finish him. Mr. Parker, how are you? I'm all right. Can I have a talk, please? I'm all right. Uh... This afternoon's late edition. Right. This evening's early edition. Okay. You girls want one? No, no thanks. thanks. What's the matter? Bursitis. Thank you. Well, this ought to keep Mr. Min safe for a little while anyway. Now all we have to do is hope that they read the papers. Okay, so what did you two find out about our ex-Marines? <sighs> Sorry, Peter, but Lou Stemple is dead. Killed in an industrial accident about three years ago in Cleveland. And I couldn't track down any of his living relatives. Well, what I got was slightly better. Not a lot, though. Martin Fulmer is in the intensive care unit of a veteran's hospital in Florida. You're kidding. Well, how's he doing? Well, he'll be out of intensive care in a week or ten days. But then it's bed rest for a couple weeks at least. He almost died on the operating table. Oh, great. So that leaves us with Jonathan Fleming, who's going under the name of Roderick Dent. Oh, he's alive and well, all right. But he ran like a bandit when I confronted him. Do you think he'd be more receptive to two ladies? Tell you what, if I strike out with him tomorrow, he's all yours. He's your only hope. You've got to get him to cooperate. I know. Well, where's the microfilm? Spider-Man got it. You idiot. Have you any idea how much it cost to get that microfilm? I had it and I... And you blew it? Well, somebody tipped him off. Ah, oh, don't give me that. I'm going to teach you to blow a gig for me. Bang! <laughs> You're dead, Joe. <laughs> what's going on? This is what's going on. So? So, I'm going back to Hong Kong a hero, that's what. Menlo Chan is dead. I'm taking a plane tomorrow night. While I'm gone, you guys tail that newspaper photographer just to make sure there's nothing funny going on. I know this is hard for you, sir. What you said before is true. I am invading your privacy, but I... I am not interested in anything that you have to say. I just thought that if you knew that a man's career, I mean, his whole life was at stake, that you might be willing to cooperate. You thought wrong, Mr. Parker. Now, I'm not trying to blackmail you. Goodbye, Mr. Parker. Wait just a minute. You don't leave me I alone. I happen to know that you stole the $10,000. I also know that you killed the Chinese school teacher. I know that you were court-martialed, that you spent two years in jail, and that you received a dishonorable discharge. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to hit you like that doesn't make any difference. You have got to help me. I mean, you just have to help me. That's ironic. That's very ironic. What? What is? Those are the exact words I said to my buddy back in China. I told him that he knew I didn't kill that teacher. 
that he had to help me. Wait a minute, are you saying you did not kill the Chinese school teacher? That's right, Mr. Barker. My buddy, Lou Stepple, stole the money and shot the teacher. Oh, he planted some of the money in my belongings. Just enough so they made a case against me. Like you, no one else believed me. Well, I admit it is difficult to believe. And your buddy Stemple is dead, so we can't ask him now, can we? I have proof now, but it's just a little late. What do you have? Poor Lou Stemple died. He sent me a letter. He was a religious man, it seemed. In the letter, he confessed that he killed the uh, teacher and stole the money. Asked my forgiveness. I even wrote him back. Forgiving him. Can you imagine that? Forgiving him. And you say that you have this letter that Stemple wrote you? Yeah. Suppose I'll save it until I die. You know, he, he sent a photograph of the teacher and his wife and kids. For some reason, Stemple kept it. God knows why. Oh, if you have the letter and a photograph, and with your testimony, you just might be able to help Mr. Min. And will you try? If the Chinese would believe neither Min nor I kill the teacher, and maybe, just maybe, the Marine Corps would believe it, too. My newspaper will back you on that. You know they will. Oh, I... I'd like to remove that stain from my record. From my life. I really would. and Min's niece are coming to Hong Kong with that ex-Marine. I don't see what you're so upset about. Min is dead. That's what I was supposed to do, wasn't it? See that he never returned from New York alive. Well, okay. Died of a heart attack instead of a bullet in the head, but he's dead. That's what you wanted. That's what you've got. And why do you suppose that the photographer and Min's niece and the ex-Marine are coming here? I don't know. Come on, Mr. Evans. Make a stab at it. Well, to clear his name, so that the ex-Marine can testify to clear Min's name. Very good, Mr. Evans. Why would that be important to Min, inasmuch as he is dead? I guess it's the Chinese thing about honor and keeping one's name clean for the ancestors. And the... <laughs> what are you laughing at? He's laughing at your ignorance, Mr. Evans. That's what he's laughing at. You've lived in China for years, and you don't know a thing about the Chinese. But it's in the paper. I mean, you can see it. The photographer works on fax paper. The photographer. And Min's niece and an ex-Marine are coming to China to vindicate Min. And then, Mr. Evans, Min Lo Chan will mysteriously return from the dead take over as Minister of Industrial Development, and I will lose the contract to build the steel mill. I made some inquiries. There's no funeral. 
The body was not returned to China. You have been had, Mr. Evans. You know, Chan's about as dead as you are. Well, the newspaper photographer and the girl have seen me so. I guess Chung better tell them. Good idea, Mr. Evans. Get rid of the ex-Marine or anybody else who tries to stop you. Make it look like an accident. Because the Hong Kong police are not as inefficient as they are back in the States. Yes, Mr. Zyder. Do not fail this time, Mr. Evans. Because if you do, the Hong Kong newspapers will carry an account of your violent death. And this time it'll be true. I guarantee it. Kung Fu men myself. They're my men. I'll pick them. My life depends on this gig coming off right. And I'm going to make sure that we get guys that kill first and think later. Are you sure he is who he says he is? You've never seen him before. 
啊，你知唔知我会嚟噶？哦，诶、呃，关于信封入边，诶、呃，有你嘅班机号数同埋张相片，系啊。Apparently, my uncle sent this along with the letter. 啊，依家安眠啦。我怕要后日咧，先至可以陪阿教授。誒、呃、去過境，關於入境手續咧，都要相當時間先可以搞得掂嘅。There will be a two-day delay before you can be taken across the border. Red tape. The first time I've ever been delighted about red tape. Now there's time to see Hong Kong again. Well, we'll see. Like I told you, the danger is not over until I agreed to come, and I'm going through with what I said I would. But don't start telling me I have to spend the next two days in a hotel room. Oh. 誒為著安全起見，我就介紹咗呢兩位好有武功嘅朋友，陪住你哋，誒直至到教授咧誒搭火車去廣州為止。等我嚟介紹，呢位就係史皇天，呢位就係陶正增。你咁鋒芒唔該曬噃。These two men will keep us company for the next two days and keep us from harm. Thank you. 18 when I was here. Hong Kong was all people and rickshaws and bicycles. Harbor was filled with junk. Of course, they weren't motorized then. You know, even though we've got these two guys guarding us, I really think we should stay away from crowds as much as possible. In Hong Kong? Are you kidding, Peter? Well, you know what I mean. We are so close now. I, I just don't want to blow it. Look at that skyline, will you? Hardly any of those buildings are here when I was here. It is quite beautiful, don't you think, Peter? Yeah, it sure is. Just promise me you won't sneak off by yourself, that you'll stay with us and the guards. Okay, pal, you got a deal. You get a good night's sleep tonight. Because at 6 a.m. tomorrow, we are all going sightseeing.
咧就係醫生陪嚟嘅，而家睇完啦，請佢收翻。shake the sticks until one falls out. Now each stick has a number. The number on the stick helps provide an answer to their prayer. But that has to be interpreted by the soothsayer. Is this a Buddhist temple or Taoist? No, Taoist. But the uh, line between two of them are often unclear. Well, let's have a look around some more and then how about some lunch? All right. And then the Aberdeen Street Market. Afterwards, I think we should go right back to the hotel. I really think we need the rest. I vote for that. Okay, it's a deal. Well, what'd you find out? They're going to have lunch, then to the Aberdeen Street Market. You've earned your money. You're through for the day. <laughs> You know, Taoism is a beautiful religion. Their gods live among the stars. Their supreme deity is called the Jade Emperor or Yuk Wong. Professor Fleming forgets I did take one of his classes. Now, there are three special star gods. The gods of happiness, prosperity, and long life. You do have a good memory. Well, you made the course live for me. It would be hard to forget. <laughs> There it is, the Aberdeen Market. I don't know, Mr. Fleming. It looks like it would sure be easy for us to get separated in there. Nothing to worry about, I tell you. No, I guess you're right. I worry too much.
Congratulations, Evans. Now, uh, how are you going to dispose of the professor? Whatever you say. I don't want him traced to me. Let's not get careless. Why don't I take him to a farm in the New Territories? No one knows him there. He can have a quiet, peaceful grave without anyone nosing around. Good idea. Okay. That's the way I'll do it. Fine. Uh, you wouldn't have really had me killed if I didn't get the professor. You know me better than that, don't you? Sure. <laughs> I just had to ask you. I understand. Let me know when you finally finish the job. You bet. <laughs> I'll explain it to you later. Bugia. Oh, good. Glad I made this addition. This should help. Yeah, well, along with these posters, maybe the police now can get some leads. Taxi! Mr. Sider, Evans, we've got a problem. Yeah, yeah, I know about the newspapers, but the police have posters of Fleming all over the place. They're all over the walls here in Fanling. 
We could have been seen. I don't like it. Okay. I'll wait for your call. Hey, you want a beer or soda? Your throat must be dry. Don't confuse me. If you're kind to me before you kill me, I'll die with mixed emotions. Thanks anyway. Mr. Zyder. Must be down in one of those farmhouses. You better find a place to set this thing down. Peter! Look, Emily, I've got this whole thing figured out. Yes, Mr. Zyder. We'll leave right now. We're moving him to a junk at Aberdeen. How are we going to get him out without being seen? There was a couple of wooden crates outside that store where you bought the beer. Yes. Go get one. We'll put them in that. Can you that? Here's what I want you to do. We'll stay in touch on these. The pilot will show you how to use it. Okay, but should we tell the police? No. There isn't any time. You look Chinese if you don't show your face. Yeah, I know. That's the whole idea. I want you to get back up in that chopper. If I need help, you'll be the first to know.
Charlie, something strange is going on here. The signal seems to be getting weaker. It's like he's moving away from me. The only thing that's near you that moves, that's moving away from you is that van that just passed you. Okay, pick me up where you drop me off.
我亦有辦法同佢解讀。真係好彩啦！You're all right. I feel like such a fool calling you a coward like I did. I didn't realize you were Spider-Man. I'm so sorry, Peter. Never mind about that. Where did they take the professor? The doctor says you should rest for a while. Where? Peter, me. Please, Emily, tell me now. Where is he? We followed them to the Connaught Tower. They took him in that wooden crate. Okay. Tell the doctor to please remove the needles. Kui yone lohe di zam. Oh, hola, hola. Have you lost your mind? It was the only thing I could think to do. So you brought him here? To my office. Spider-Man attacked us at the Aberdeen Harbor. We stopped him, but it created a lot of attention. Too many people. I didn't know where else to bring him. Where's Chung? He cut out. He's smart, not like you. Where are the rest of the men? Outside on the terrace. Mr. Zyder, it's Sunday. Nobody else was in the building but the janitors. We had the professor in a box. No one saw him. No one was suspicious. <laughs> we'll wait until dark.
be able to do it. Well, we're in your debt. How is your uncle? I spoke with him this morning. He's much better, thank you. So, my secret is safe with you? Of course. I won't tell anyone that you're Spider-Man. Anyway, I won't have anyone to tell. I've, uh, decided I should stay here and learn what it means to be Chinese. Yeah, I can understand that. But I'll miss you. Pan American, flight number two for San Francisco, now boarding at gate 14. Will you ever come back to Hong Kong? Well, I have a reason to now. I shall always remember you, too. Final call, please, for Pan American Airlines. Flight number two, departing for San Francisco. 